Hi guys, how are you today? We are uh, bracing ourselves from some nasty weather. I know some some of you on the east coast have uh, of the U.S. have already gotten it, and uh, apparently it's our turn next. So we have a nice fire on going in the family room, and it's nice and cozy in the house. And so it looks like a perfect day to just sit back and paint because this looks like it'll be a good day for it. It is gray and gloomy and we're expecting freezing rain and ice pellets and snow. So it's not going to be a very pleasant afternoon and evening. So we're going to make it more pleasant. We're going to paint some daffodils. Look forward to spring. <laughs> I know I am. If we don't get snow pretty soon and lots of it, I'm going to be wishing for spring. I don't like the rain. Uh, what else? What's on the top of our agenda today? Oh, YouTube channel. Next week's live is going to be live on YouTube, not on the Facebook page. So we're, we're trying out something new. So we're going to go live, of, live on the YouTube channel and we're going to give that a shot because <laughs> I've never done it. So hopefully Renee knows what he's doing on this one. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm anxious to try it. So that's uh, for next Saturday. And um, not sure yet what we're doing, but um, we'll figure it out. Today we're going to paint daffodils. And um, these are really fun. I've incorporated a faux cloisonne effect for this. And it, it is easy and it's fun and it's really, really effective. So if you're ready to get started, so am I. <laughs> Boop, I'm down now. Um, now, some of you that ordered the pattern did not find either the line drawing was missing or the lettering was missing. Um, we're thinking that there was a problem when we uploaded the file onto the server. So um, you will notice on the Tracy Morrow Live Facebook page, there is a place where you can download the lettering. And um, if you purchase the pattern, you can go back now and it is has been fixed, but you'll be able to re-download it with everything, hopefully. If not, send us a quick message and we'll be more than happy to uh, make sure that you get the line drawing. So this is it, this is daffodils. This one is not a difficult paint. I know it looks like it, but it really isn't. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So I've already prepped my piece out to, uh, to a few stages. So um, this is what it's going to look like. So we have uh, the cup, the teacup is base coated with Bahama blue, which is this gorgeous. This is my favorite deco art color, um, notwithstanding a schwaltum. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my favorite deco art color. In fact, it's on the back of my deco art business card. Uh, I love this color. I just think it's such a perfect blue, green, turquoisey teal. I just love this color and it makes a nice, contrast for that yellow daffodil. So it makes the colors just pop. I love it. Uh, the flowers themselves are base coated with Sunny Day, which is this nice buttery yellow. And the leaves on this one are aloe, which is this sort of muddy, I don't know, this is a really strange green to me. Uh, but it's a nice opaque base for leaves, so that's why I used it. All I see is cam paint. I know. <laughs> does look like camp paint, doesn't it? Of course, the soldier in the family calls this camp paint color. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I like this green, but it's it's an odd green. It's very matte, very opaque, um, and That's kind of grayed good. out, but uh, it makes a great base for these leaves. Oh, antique green. Yeah, antique yeah, that's green. the other khaki green. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. So we've got everything on here base coated, the leaves, teacup. The top of the saucer is base coated with warm white. Uh, I have a trick for painting this, especially this little narrow band at the bottom and you want to keep it nice and straight. I just tape mine off with a little bit of painter's tape and then use a stencil brush to put the color in. And that worked really well. And it's an easy thing to do, just... Nope. Somebody's internet went out, just missed what the blue on the cup was. Bahama Blue is the name of the color. So I just tape off both sides of that. This was entirely accidental, by the way, getting this tape torn this way. So I just taped off my 
the bottom edge of that teacup, that little narrow band. I just taped it off like so. Like that. And then just used a stencil brush to put that, that color in. Linda asks, what can you use if you don't have sunny day or aloe green? If you don't have sunny day or aloe green, um, you can replace the sunny day with, uh, I think it's banana cream. That will work just fine. And um, for the aloe, um, you could use almost any green, but celery green will work. You just need something fairly opaque for that. So even a celery green would work. I think it's celery. Or wasabi green. I think wasabi green is discontinued though, but if you have it, that'll work. We just need a fairly opaque green. We're going to shade and highlight this anyway, and then we're going to put a wash of like a glaze of color over top of it. So it just needs to be an opaque green and not too dark. So a wasabi green, something like that would work just fine. So once you have that little band taped off, you can just take your base color in this case i'm using the bahama blue i just wanted to show you this little trick because it does save you doing a lot of touch-ups so i just load my stencil brush and then just stencil neat and tidy good morning from new mexico just like that so once it's stenciled in you just give it a minute to set up and then you can remove your tape. And that gives you a nice clean, solid base coat and then you don't have to worry about touching up all those little little bits everywhere. It's just a, a quick tip on how to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do in this one is we're going to start stenciling that, um, that teacup. Now I'm using, it's an M square stencil. Uh, it's an M222, which is a quarter inch polka dot stencil, and it has a half inch spacing, so it's not too, too tiny. And we have lots in stock. And we have lots in stock, <laughs> yeah, that's always good. So I'm just going to position it, and as always, I secure my stencil so that it doesn't shift because there's nothing worse. Actually, I imagine there's probably a lot of things worse than a shifting stencil, <laughs> but not when it comes to paint that don't stick paint that doesn't want to stick okay so i've got mine secured and i'm using warm white Oof, i think my paint's a little thin and i'm using a dynasty stencil pro stencil brush i like these ones the synthetic <laughs> stencil brushes good morning from bc no sunshine yet <laughs> bc do you have sunshine not in the winter not in the winter so now I'm going to work in a circular fashion. This is a light touch. I am not pressing hard with this. I don't want to push too hard. Now, if I really wanted to get persnickety, I could, um, I could mask off this whole teacup, uh, but I'm just going to take a little care putting that color on. Karen gets to paint again. <laughs> she's got her studio all set up, so she's ready right to roll. Right on. So there we go. I've got some warm white poker dots on my teacup. <laughs> dull, dull and gray in Nova Scotia. And I think Nova Scotia is getting the same mess we're getting. Yeah. Will any stencil brush work? Any stencil brush. <laughs> will work just fine. This is just my preference. I have either used my signature stencil brush or the Stencil Pro, either one. But any stencil brush will work just fine. So I'm going to, now this is the reason that I tape my stencil in place because I want to see if I've missed anywhere or if I need to make these brighter. So I have the ability to move the stencil out of the way to assess what I've done. If I'm satisfied, I can simply remove it. If I feel that something needs to be tweaked or touched up or improved upon, I can just drop it back into place and I can 
fix up whatever I feel needs to be fixed up. When it comes to stencils, accuracy is important. And trying to drop that back into place and realign it uh, freehand doesn't always work well. So I really like to have it secured in place. And then when I'm happy, I can simply remove the stencil. Love the two cameras. So we can see your palette. <laughs> It is, it is handy to be able to see the palette. I mean, not that there's any real magic going on there, but... Um, Some would consider it magic. <laughs> now, magic, I, witchcraft, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, you'd say it would be witchcraft. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a little trick, what, since I have your undivided attention. Hey, look, bird zoom. This is... Um, this is hand sanitizer. It's a this one is a 70% plant-based alcohol, but any hand sanitizer will do just fine. Um, and this is a great way to clean stencils, especially these synthetic stencil brushes, because they're a little more forgiving than the than the natural bristle. So I put a little bit of that hand sanitizer in the palm of my hand, and I just work it like this, and it will break up the acrylic paint and then yeah, you just you used acrylic paint in there <laughs> I did oh, okay. and then you can just clean it off yeah this one's a little stained but it's there's no chunky bits of paint left in it which is good but the nice part about using a hand sanitizer for quick cleanups while you're working is that the alcohol evaporates very quickly and so you can continue to use the stencil brush. Once I am all done with my stencil brushes for the day, I give them a good cleaning with some brush cleaner and that helps put some of the moisture back into the brush. And uh, if you did this too often, it makes the bristles, especially on a natural hairbrush. Senior brushes. <laughs> <laughs> they get a lot of work. <laughs> So that's a quick tip on how to clean your stencil brush um, in between uses. Because that alcohol evaporates, you can continue to work without messing up your... I'm not zoomed in yet. We're not doing the bird yet. We're <laughs> not doing the bird yet. So now we're going to uh, move on to these leaves. Now I start with my shading on these and I'm going to use my, there's my 3 8 there it is. And here's my 3 8 angled shader. And we're going to use, um, I'm using fluid acrylic. Um, and the color I'm using is the quinacridone gold. And I'm also using a color called orange flame. I think it's orange flame, if I can find my bottle of paint. That's tangerine. find my orange flame. <laughs> ah, there it is. Gee, it escaped me. So oh I'm using... God, that is a bright orange. It is a bright orange. <laughs> <laughs> this is orange flame. I love this orange. So we're going to use orange flame and quinacridone gold. Now if you don't have quinacridone gold, you can use a little bit of burnt sienna. So I'm going to pick up a small amount of that orange flame and I'm going to blend it out well because I don't want this color to be full strength. So I'm blending it out well. And this is my shading color for these daffodils. Am I still in the shot with yes, this? You are. Okay. So that shading color, I'm going to shade the center line of those petals and underneath areas with that vivid orange. I do love this orange. So there's my shading color. Now the shading goes down that center vein into and under those little flip overs 
like this. All those little turnovers underneath the ruffles and into the ruffles. Now this is going to look really awkward at first. So you'll notice on the ruffles of these flowers, on the portion that goes furthest out, you're going to put a, a little C stroke of that orange, like so. And the length of it is going to point back towards the center of the flower. It's just a little C stroke and I'm not going right to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of that yellow at the very edge. And it just creates a little dip in the flower. And I'm going to do the same thing there. Do you use hand sanitizer to clean your stencils? Yes. You can take that liquid hand sanitizer and put it into a little spritzer, a little pump sprayer, and it works beautifully. Just spray the stencil and then wipe it off. Obviously, if you're working with stencils that have a lot of detail, take a little care with all those little bits. But uh, yes, hand sanitizer will work very well for cleaning stencils. Oh, hi from Mississauga, where the sun is shining. Okay, now you're just bragging, you Ontario girls. <laughs> and hopefully you guys are doing well in the current state of lockdown. I hope everybody is staying safe. Staying home and painting. Stay home and paint, yeah. That's what I've been doing for the last 10 months. <laughs> But you do it for a living. <laughs> <laughs> so there I've got all of my orange in. Now it still looks a little wishy-washy. So we need to deepen that a little bit. But I don't want to kill that heat. So I'm going to use the quinacridone gold. What an amazing color to work with on such a nasty day. <laughs> oh, we needed something sunshiny and bright. It's been a ugly couple of weeks. So, <laughs> you know... So I picked up a small amount of that quinacridone gold. Now the quinacridone is a very transparent color. And it is also a very rich color. I love it. And it will give you a really nice shadow on these flowers. How do you load your brush so well to shade? Your color lasts so long. Two tips about loading your brush. Um, I, I've said this before. I don't have it out today. Um, getting the right balance of moisture in your brush is key. And so I, when I'm teaching beginners in particular, and they're first learning how to float, I give them a sponge, a cellulose sponge, and it's wet. Not drippy wet, but just wet. And then I get them to soak their brush in water and then just touch the brush to the surface of the sponge. The sponge will only pull off so much moisture, and it usually leaves the brush with just the right amount. And then you pick up your paint and blend. Are you using a floating medium or water? Water! I'm using water today. A lot of the time I use Joe Sonia's fast drying glaze. I'm just currently out of fast drying glaze. Good luck getting some. And good luck getting some. <laughs> I've had difficulty finding it um, without having to, you know, sacrifice a small animal. So or give up one of the kids. Which do you prefer? I am a big proponent of the fast drying glaze. I love it because it gives you such great control and it allows the colors to stay very rich and vibrant so I can thin the color without diluting it. Do you lose opacity with it though? Uh, yes, the idea is a glazing medium so it makes the paint a little more transparent, which is exactly what you want for floating don't have that in automotive stuff. No. We have to thin it. <laughs> yeah. But you're also in spring, you're using a medium yeah. to thin it. So just about there. So now wherever I put that orange flame, I'm putting that quinacridone gold or burnt sienna. Now with the burnt sienna, it's a little more opaque. So you have to really thin it out. 
You're putting that right over the... Uh, right over the orange flame. Orange flame. Okay. Because it's transparent, the two colors are working together. <laughs> Is the question, which do you prefer? <laughs> which kid would give up? <laughs> <laughs> that depends on the day. <laughs> What sponge to use for your brush? It's just a regular kitchen sponge. Yeah, it's just a regular kitchen sponge. You know, the type, the blue type with the scrubby on one side and the cellulose on the other. I have a different brand of floating medium and I've noticed it takes a bit longer to dry. Is that normal? Yes, it is. Because the, the medium actually extends the open time of the paint. The Joe Sonia's fast drying glaze, uh, it still stays a wet a little bit longer, but it dries faster than your average glazing medium. So there I have my shading in place. So pretty. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I bet nobody would guess what color I'm going to use next. <laughs> Avocado green. No, no, not avocado green. Margarita? No. Uh, sunny day? No. Uh, He's just being an ass. Don't mind him. <laughs> he knows it's going to be a fault them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing with the a A very small quantity of paint. And I'm going to brush it out so it's nice and thin. I want it transparent. I don't want it full strength. Because we don't want to make these flowers look too dark. Now, all this thin layer of asphaltum is going to do is just tone it. So it's not going to kill the color. If I did this with, uh, let's say, a burnt umber, for instance, it would subdue the color greatly. Whereas the asphaltum will give me that deep, deeper color, but not kill it. Pardon my English. I'm from Trois-Rivières. Um, is the fluid paint for, e for your shadows? Can you show me the bot bottle? What do you use for the shadows? Oh, She's yeah. asking about the fluid acrylic. Ah. <laughs> Ash Fulton. Ash Fulton. And then Ash Fulton. the deeper color that I'm using <laughs> is the Ash Fulton. I love this color. Everybody knows that. I use it on everything. <laughs> and I like how it, if you have a look here, it deepens the color without killing it. So I get that deeper tone, but without losing any of the vibrancy of the color. Uh, is it, so it's important to let each float layer dry so it doesn't pull up the initial layer? Yes. The one thing you will find with fluid acrylics is once they are dry, they don't move. <laughs> What's a good substitute for asphaltum? I can't find it anywhere. Uh, asphaltum is a difficult color to find right now, yeah. but if you absolutely need to use a brown, burnt umber. Uh, a burnt umber, but use it sparingly. Really thin it out as much as you can. Use it very sparingly. Lots and lots of drip. Uh, glazing medium. Yeah. So you can see that that color gives me that nice tone. Actually, you probably show me how to do that. Use the burnt umber instead of the asphalt. And... I don't even know if I have burnt umber. It's not a color I use much. <laughs> <laughs> It's no. more of a red, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a reddish tone as opposed to the yellow. The, um, I don't know. He's going to look and see if I have a bottle of burnt umber. It'd be down there with the browns. Not a color I use much. I like sable. <laughs> One of my favorite colors. I don't know why. I think it reminds me of horses. Mud. This is coming from the guy who won't go near horses. <laughs> I, they terrify me. <laughs> My ancestors are rolling over in their graves. I know. Sorry. They scare me. Hey, look. Burnt umber. One bottle? I know. 
Oh. And, and, and it's in the oh. old label. Yeah. <laughs> We've had this, give you an idea. This label has been retired, retired for two years. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have two brand new bottles of burnt umber. Tells you how long. Oh, and it needs a good shake too. So just to, uh, yeah, this is a good opportunity to show you the difference between the two. Burnt umber is that color that people use for antiquing and aging I mean, things. I'm going to bring your palette as the main screen. Okay. So that way you can show. So just so you can see the difference, this is the Ishvaltum. You can see that it has sort of a yellowish undertone. And this is the burnt umber. It has a slightly reddish undertone, but we want that color subdued, pardon me, subdued a little bit. So you can see, hopefully you can see that on camera, that the two colors are, you know, one has a slightly reddish undertone and one has a golden undertone. So this is the burnt umber. And you want to use this, as I said, sparingly because it will flatten color out if you use it if you're a little too heavy-handed with it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Is it thirsty? No, just a tickle. It's not the Rona. It's not the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> it's the coup. So, that burnt umber will do the job admirably, but you do have to use it sparingly. If I were to put too much on, it will take the fire right out of this, these oranges and yellows and flatten out the color. Is there another way to transfer the design onto your surface without transfer paper? Uh, um, yeah, you could actually draw it on. You could draw it on. Um, you can cut the whole thing out and trace around it. Yep but then you're cutting each individual piece and getting every detail cut out first and then tracing it on. Yeah. Um, I like to use uh, white graphite myself, either that or I'll freehand it on, which I've been known to do and it irritates people. <laughs> so I'm just about finished putting all of this shading in. I love, see, I, I am not at all Nervous about using Ashfaltum, but Burnt Umber. Is this a new pattern? It is. Just finished it this week. It's on the website. Oh, yep. I'll put the website up. Boom. Right there. Yep. Where can I find a video of you teaching floating? <laughs> Almost every one. <laughs> every live. Someone Almost always every asks one. And she always accommodates. <laughs> Are you still using the burnt umber? No, this is the no, asphalt. Uh, see, I can't tell the difference. I can. <laughs> 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 so I like how the, because there's a yellow cast to that asphalt, I like how it lets the yellows show through. It doesn't take the life out of the yellows. They stay nice and bright. So, just about done shading this. Are the fluid acrylics better for shading and highlighting? I, uh, yes, that's my personal opinion. I, uh, the reason I like using them is because of their transparency. Um, for highlighting, because they're not opaque, because they don't have, you know, a lot of solids in them, um, the highlighting not necessarily so you need a lighter value you know lots of brights but uh, for shading colors for basing in colors for doing glazing and things like that they're absolutely amazing the process for using fluid acrylic for everyday painting is a little bit different we're accustomed to simply base coating shading and highlighting with the fluid acrylic you have to lay down some sort of a base in order to show off the color and so I use gesso and then working with fluid acrylics, we do it in layers, lots and lots of layers of transparent colors. But what I do love about them is once they're in place, that's it. They don't go anywhere. 
Thank you. I can draw freehand. I just was looking for a relatively easy way to get the design down without transfer paper. Because it's not accessible here, I have to order it, and mail is so slow right now. <laughs> well, I mean, there is there is an old-fashioned method of, of transferring, um, and that is uh, pressing onto the back. So put, oh, yeah. putting your image, flipping it over on the back so it's face down on to a light table or up on a window, and then tracing it with either a white chalk pencil or with, um, you know, a soft lead pencil. And then then flipping it back over. There is that method. It's an old one, but it it works just fine. So there we have our shading in. So now I'm going to throw in a few little highlights. I'm just using a little bit of warm white. And again, I'm really thinning out this paint. And I'm going to go to those highlighted areas and just put a little bit of that white on those highlight areas. So let me turn it this way. This is just a float. Again, on those little highlight areas and I'm keeping it very loose. There is nothing neat and tidy about this. It's just a loose float. Now, in those areas between those shaded areas, I'm just putting a little splash of that warm white over top of that yellow just to add a highlight to those areas between. And it's a rough highlight. There's nothing neat and tidy about this. So don't get excited over it. Mm-hmm. And you'll, I know it looks sketchy. <laughs> It doesn't look neat and tidy. This is a very That's loose. An artist pun. Yes, it is an artist pun. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, rub chalk on the back side. Yeah, chalk will work too. Um, chalk pouch will work. You can perforate holes on along the design and use a, mm-hmm. a pouch of chalk. That and will work. Play connect the dots. And play connect the dots, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm just putting a little bit of white in there. And again, you can tell this is very loose. These little daffodils are going to uh, take on a life of their own here in a little bit. I think everybody's excited to see how you paint the chickadee. (laughs) Which, by the way, is one of the most annoying birds. They're lovely little birds. They're lovely to look at. They're lovely. When it's first thing in the morning and all you hear is chickadee dee 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 (laughs) dee. God, they're annoying. <laughs> no, they're not. I'm not city a fan. boy. <laughs> not a fan. He's a city boy. Much rather wake up the coyotes. <laughs> well, I did the other day. Yeah. Oh yeah, they went to the backyard again. Yeah, they did. Left us little presents back there. I think they smelled dot. Could be. It's either coyotes or wild dog. Yeah, it's coyotes, I think. I knew they were close because I could hear them. Okay, so I've got just a simple, like, really rudimentary highlight in place here. And you'll see why I'm not being too fastidious shortly. Mm -hmm. I like that little sketchy highlight. Your paint goes so far. (laughs) I love chickadees. I love chickadees too. So we've got our daffodils to the last stage that we want. So now it's time to start working on these leaves. Now the color I'm using is sap green. And we're going to start by shading in some of these leaves. So, again, that fluid acrylic, which when somebody said the color goes a long way, (laughs) the fluid acrylic goes a very long way. If you look at my palette, um, I've got a a drop of paint on here, probably half the size of a dime, maybe the size of a dime. That's probably 10 times more paint than I really need to have out. 
<laughs> so we're going to start by shading in here. <laughs> I don't know about this son of yours. No chickadees, no glitter. <laughs> What's with that? I know. Sometimes, you know, I feel like, you know, just set them out for the wolves. I'll get along with wolves. I know you do. I like wolves. So I'm just putting... I won't even call I've been this in a, a cage wash. With wolves. <laughs> and they let you out? <laughs> yeah. They didn't even growl at me. So I'm just putting no, I won't call it a float, it's more like a wash of that sap green into those deeper areas because I want those ones to be the darkest parts of this. What is fluid acrylic's purpose? How are they different from regular acrylic paint? Fluid acrylic, these are a fine art quality paint. These are, a, let's call it an artist quality, uh, but this is a fine art paint. And it, the difference primarily is the pigment load. There is far more pigment in these little fluid acrylics than there are in the Americana. Now the Americana have a high white content, that's why they're so opaque. Whereas these are almost pure pigment added to an acrylic base. So you get gorgeous, deep, rich color, but they're very transparent. There's only a few colors in the media line that aren't transparent. <laughs> this is so beautiful. I could never freehand draw this. Oh, sure you could. Sure you could. Practice. So, all of those shaded areas under the flowers are done with the plantation pine. Those little tight areas underneath the flowers. I worry about all of these shadows first. And then we're going to let those dry. And you might notice in this, you see all of these spaces. I don't know if they show up on camera or not. You see all these spaces. There's narrow gaps in between all of these areas in the flowers. They are not lines, they're actually spaces. So the black line that you see is the background. <laughs> is that why they cost more? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, is it's also why when you look at some of the colors, some of them have different pricings because the pigments themselves are more expensive than others. And so that each of the individual bottles have different prices. Uh, what is an alternative to the color sap green? Plantation pine. Plantation pine. Just thin it out. Yep. I, um, I try to keep a selection of colors here that you can use as alternatives if you can't get your hands on the fluid acrylics. So in this particular case, I've used uh, the sap green. I'm going to use green gold. And oh, what's the other color I'm going to use? Olive green. There it is. Okay, so I've got uh, green gold in the media acrylic. Diarylide yellow in the media acrylic, sap green in the media acrylic. Those are the colors that I that I am using. You can substitute those, and here's the substitutions: plantation pine for the sap green, olive green for the green gold, burnt sienna for that quinacridone gold. Sorry, I forgot to mention that one. And then for that diarylide yellow, you can use saffron yellow. So if you can't find the fluid acrylics or don't have them, don't worry about it. You can just you can use those as a substitute. So I'm going to. What I love about these fluid acrylics is when you start layering these colors. Of course, <laughs> when you were showing the bottles, yeah, that camera started crapping out. Which camera? That one. Oh, great. So, what was it? Uh, plantation pine. Yep. Olive green. Olive green. Burnt sienna. Yeah. I don't often put these in front of the camera. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting in that center vein on some of these leaves. And plantation pine. 
So there are... Yeah, literally just uh, when you were showing the bottles to the, the uh -huh. top down camera, uh -huh. it literally started chop oh, it up. Oh, down. okay. So there we go. So now I've got that center vein done on my leaves. I'm going to come back in all these floated areas and give them... Careful, guys. All these comments are going to go to his head. <laughs> Am I missing something here? I love watching you paint. I'm not painting. <laughs> <laughs> right now, working on summer, sweet summer chickadee. Yeah. Is that one of yours? Sweet summer. Yes, it is. It's full of daisies. Oh. Um, <laughs> anxious to see your bird painted. He is actually very easy to paint. And he does not take long, so. Oh, kudos to your son, too. He is delightful. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's <Taking> darling. <laughs> <laughs> so there is my shading on all of those little leaves. I like to put just a small shadow at the base of the leaf. Love listening to you, Renee. So appreciate all the work you do. Mm -hmm. Careful, guys! All these comments are gonna go to his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to butter his ears to get him out the door. Yeah. So now I have all of the shade, the shadows on those leaves have been placed, except one. I missed one. Hello, right there. So now I'm going to start deepening these shadows down in here a little bit. Like so. And it's just a wash. I'm not using a really strong float technique for this. It's just getting them a little darker in a few areas and underneath those leaves. So hoot meeting? Is Hoot coming back? Oh my God. Hoot. Hoot. Heart of Ohio Toll it was a great show we used to do in Ohio, yeah. in Columbus. Great bunch of ladies used to organize that. Miss your humor, Renee. Oh, that's Karen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I have now deepened those shadows a little bit. And gave it a highlight. I haven't highlighted anything yet. No. No. Why does it look like there's a... It's because I've layered the shadows. Oh, yes. So, now, this is where things get a little strange. I'm going to dry this real quick, and then um, we're going to make that green pop. This is one of my favorite things. Now I'm using green gold for this. You can use the olive green. You're just going to have to thin it out drastically to do it because it is quite opaque and we need it to be very transparent. So I'm going to find myself a nice little round brush for this. There we go. And I'm going to thin this color out quite a bit so that it makes a wash. And I'm going to take that green gold, and this is where these leaves just pop. So I'm just putting a wash of that green gold over top of everything. Over the sap green, over the olive green, it goes over everything. So it's just a wash of that bright green over top of everything. Just like that. So those leaves just suddenly come to life. That tiny little bit of color, and it is just a tiny little bit of color. It's not a ton. It's very transparent. And it gives those leaves great life.
I love this green gold. It's such a vibrant, vibrant green. And then when you put it over top of that aloe, you have that nice opacity and that green tone from the aloe. And then when you put this green gold over top, there is your vibrancy, that lush spring color that we wanted. I just find using a, a color like that, that a more opaque bright lime green, when you start shading it, it loses something. And by using this glaze technique or this wash technique over top, we get the opacity, but we also get all of that vibrancy. Whoa. So there are your nice bright spring green leaves. I'm gonna dry that really quick. <laughs> So I'm going to take a little bit of warm white on my angle and I'm going to pick up a tiny amount of that green gold and I'm going to blend it well. Now I've just added a small amount of white to it and this is where we're going to brighten a highlight. And it's subtle, it is not an in-your-face highlight, but it is enough to change the look of that leaf. Is that media color green gold? Yes. And you can do this with the olive green. You won't have to add white to the olive green when you do the highlighting. When you say everything, do you mean on top of the Just shadows? Just the well? over top of the shadows, everywhere. Just on the leaves, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Face coated again. So that little highlight, that tiny amount of white, is just enough to change that green and give us that little punch of light that we needed. And I'm going to take that same color out to the tips of those leaves. On those little leaves, just a little bit. <laughs> Are you using a hair dryer to dry your paint? Um, what I'm using actually is an old heat gun and then I set it on a low temperature. I don't want it too hot because you can literally melt your paint if it's too hot. Bake your paint ended up cracking. Yeah. So there we go. There is our highlight on those leaves. If you want the leaves more subdued, what could you use? Um, with less, I then just go ahead and highlight the aloe with a little bit of aloe and a little bit of warm white. It'll keep the leaves a little toned down. Any tips for a good wash? Um, make sure that your color stays very transparent and work in thin overlapping layers. If you use too much of it at once, it tends to bury color. I prefer to layer things. It just gives you more control. Thin layers. Is there a pattern? Yes, there is a pattern. It's available at, boop, oh, my bad, there you go. So there are our highlights on our leaves. Nice bright, I love that vibrant green. From here, I just go back in and deepen shadows as I see fit. If I find that something is a little, perhaps a little too light, needs to be deepened or darkened, this is where I do that. I go back in with my sap green or my plantation pine and I deepen shadows <laughs> when I feel it's necessary. <laughs> I keep forgetting that I can dry with a hair dryer. I have a tendency to just sit and wait <laughs> and wait and wait. Yeah. Watching paint dry, story of my life. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the bird looks like he's balancing a snowball on his nose. He does. <laughs> He won't for long because we're going to start shading our, our uh, teacup. Now, the color I chose to do the teacup was, again, that Bahama Blue, but we're going to use Peacock Teal for the shading. 
<laughs> Bouncing a snowball. So I'm using Peacock Teal for the shading on the cup. Okay, so gotta... our... Oh, I forgot to do the little vines and tendrils. Get your micron out. Out comes my micron. I'm going to use a mixture of the green gold and warm white. Um, and it's about a one-to-one -one because I, I want this green to be quite opaque. There we go. So equal amounts of uh, the warm white and the green gold. Sorry, I may have had the wrong... And I'm using, this one is my 10 aught Micron. I'm using a 10 aught Extra Long Detail Liner for this. Twister Brushes Chapter Meeting here in Oklahoma. <laughs> it's hard being the president. So I'm going to use my liner to put in these little vines and tendrils. Peacock teal. Yep. Peacock teal, not peacock tail. Yep. And so there are the little vines and tendrils done with that mixture of green gold and warm white. Your touch when holding your brush looks so loose and gentle. Probably because it is. I don't, uh, a little wobbly today it seems to me anyway. Did you have coffee? Yes, no caffeine. Oh. So, green gold is in the, uh, the fluid, fluid acrylic. acrylic. If you don't have the fluid acrylic, then just take a little bit of that um, olive green and mix it with a little bit of the warm white. It will give you the same color. Oof. Not so great with the brush today, the liner. Um, something I like doing with these little leaves, these little tiny ones down here, I like putting a little scribbly line around them just to soften the edge a bit. I just find a lot of the time they just look too... <laughs> no caffeine, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, going to buy the pattern on your website. Any discount code this month? Yes, Painting Pal. Painting Pal, there you go. Painting Pal. We've used the discount code Painting Pal. So if you're ordering stencils or patterns, by all means. It's all one word? All one word, painting pal. So there, I've got my little vines and tendrils in. So now we're going to start working on our teacup. This one's going to work up pretty quick. Um, I'm working with, where's my half inch? There's my half inch angle. You might have noticed I really like my angle brushes. So the green gold doesn't actually have gold. No, it does not. <laughs> it's just a high yellow content, very high yellow. So I'm working with half inch angle and the color I'm using is... <laughs> that brush seems to hold paint for a long time. <laughs> Secret? <laughs> It's all in getting, again, it's all about getting that right amount of moisture in the brush. So again, I blend heavily when I load so that I have a nice transition of color. Now, of course, I loaded the brush and I haven't penciled in my lines on the cup yet. So I'm going to just quickly sketch them in because I didn't trace mine on. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly sketch them Can in. Can you use the Canada code with this one? Uh, the Canada code, uh, if you're Canadian, yes, by all means. If you don't have a Canadian um, postal code, it won't work. <laughs> but if you're Canadian, by all means, use that one. It Essentially what that code does, uh, because the site is listed in U.S. dollars, and because my site is hosted in a U.S. company, um, it will essentially discount you the amount that you would actually pay for the exchange rate and the whatnot. Can they, so can they use that painting pals code along with? No, it's one or the other. It's one or the other. Yeah, 
and the the Canada code gives you a better discount. Yeah. We haven't we haven't search. figured out how to do that yet. Yeah. Do you sell the brushes on on your website? We do some. I have <laughs> stencil brushes right now. Um, the riggers and whatnot are out of stock and are back ordered. Um, but, you can go to the brush guys. but we do have. Um, I do have a discount code for the brush guys. So if you are uh, looking for brushes, go to thebrushguys.com. They do ship to Canada and their postage is reasonable. Um, they do ship through Canada Post, so you're not paying, and it's not too terrible. So uh, the discount code is my name, Tracy M. And now, the Brush Guys brushes are already discounted at 40%, and that one just gives you an, a discount, an additional discount of 5%. So, going to save a ton. 45% off. Yeah. That's pretty good. It is. So, I'm just shading this with a little of that peacock teal. I love this color. Now I know what I've been doing wrong. I always tried to do the swirls all at once. Now I see your method. I do them in pieces. I've never been able to do swirls in one go and make them look good. So now again, my shading on this looks choppy and rough and that's okay because it's going to smooth out as we go. Purchase the pattern and my directions do not have all the details of your application. Is there another version? Directions. Details in the application. The only thing that is not in that pattern is a step out of doing the bird because we have it on video. Yeah. So, in a couple of locations, and we're going to show you today how to paint that. And it will be on the YouTube channel. So, as you can see, I do not putts around with shading on these things. <laughs> <laughs> Neatness doesn't count. <laughs> Perfection is to be avoided. Yo smite? Yosemite, I know. <laughs> Yo smite! Yosemite area, California. I love this piece. Thank you. Yosemite, California. Man, I bet it's pretty there. I bet it's dry. <laughs> yeah, something it is not here today. <laughs> uh, use the video and the pattern. Works well. Yeah. Yep. So you can see that this color, every time I put on a layer, that shading gets just a little bit darker. And I put the focus of that shading up underneath these flowers. This is where I need it to be the darkest because there's the least amount of light getting to things there. Now I'm going to come over here to the handle and I'm going to switch to a smaller angle. No, oh no, miss this. Will, there, will this be on replay? Absolutely. So I'm going to put a float of that peacock teal under each one of those little curves like that and in behind our little chickadee and on the handle like so I love this color it's so pretty love it you're so talented now I'm going to dry this real fast. And the answer is yes, Linda. It is peacock teal. Yep. Now I'm going to come down to the bottom here. And I need to put a float along the bottom, right above that white border on the saucer. Mm -hmm. 
You notice when I'm floating for this, it's more like a pity pat. I don't want those hard edged floats. Why do you leave the line showing in the design? Oh, and we'll show you that in a few minutes. That line that I pointed out on these flowers, um, I do it for two reasons. One is that I absolutely hate retracing things on. <laughs> and so I leave a space so that I can see where each of the individual sections are when I'm base coating. By the time I am done shading, you can't see them anyhow. So I keep them fairly fine. In this particular case, it's because we're going to do a faux cloisonné effect. So I'm really not worrying too much about those gaps because by the time I'm finished with them, you're never going to see them. So I've just about done with my peacock teal. I usually do two to three floats of color for this just so that I get that nice deep value. And because the paint is thinned quite well, um, I can still see my polka dots through it. So I had a good question and I think it deserves What's another that? camera. So. Oh, okay. What do you need? <laughs> well, I'm going to... So I'm going to dry this, then I'm going to take a pencil and get rid of those graphite lines on my Peace. We really needed this cheerful springy design this week. Thank you. Yes, we did need some cheering up this week. I think everybody was kind of feeling the the pressure this week. Hello from Central Florida. Welcome, welcome from Central Florida. You're just not allowed to gloat about the weather. <laughs> the one thing you can't do today. Is peacock teal a media color? No, it is not. It's an Americana color. Right there. Yay. There's a bunch of these, this type of tone in the Americanas that I absolutely love. Um, I like peacock teal. I love this one. This is a newer color in the uh, Americana line. I think this one came out last year. This is mermaid tail and it's a little bit, it's like mm, maybe one value darker than the peacock teal. So if you don't have the peacock teal, you could certainly use that mermaid tail. It's a nice, really nice tealy blue. It's very pretty. So now I have my shading in place. I'm going to take my angle and I'm coming into my asphaltum. I know you're surprised by that. Not really. So I'm going to use that asphaltum and again I very rarely use this color full strength so I blend it out well and this is going to tone all of these shadows. So we had a question whether you ever painted with oils? Yes. Uh, when I first started painting in 1975, I started in oils. I painted in oils until I was in high school in probably the early 1980s. Um, in art school, of course, we were required to use oils and, and acrylics and ink and whatever else, but um, yes, I have worked in oils. If there's one medium that I'm not particularly comfortable working in, it's watercolor. I do like working in oils. Watercolor is one of those mediums that, um, for me, uh, it requires some control. <laughs> or perhaps it requires the opposite of control, just relaxing and letting go, and I'm not, um, not really adept at watercolor. I do love the look of it. Um, a lot of the paintings that I've collected over the years tend to be watercolors and I greatly admire artists that work in that medium. Shelley Pryor is one of my favorites. I'm a Canadian artist, absolutely remarkable watercolorist. Uh, again, what was the name of the effect you're going to use? I have trouble hearing 
you say it. The, the effect that I'm going to use is called a full cloisonné. Now, a cloisonné is uh, originated in the... Uh, in Russia, wasn't it? In Russia, originally, millennia ago. Um, the more common version of it now is done in China. And essentially what it is, is a metal, um, usually done on metal work, like vases and boxes and things like that. And they use either silver or gold wire to form the design. And then each of the segments created by that wire are filled in with an enamel pigment. And then when it's fired, it melts. And then you get these incredible designs, these beautiful, um, elegant designs. Um, again, the more common one that we see is usually done from China, but um, enamel work is seen in most countries throughout Asia. Are you using and like green a, in there? No, I'm using a little bit of asphaltum. It's a very oh, thin okay. wash of asphaltum That's just to deepen green. that shading. It just looks green on camera for me. Yeah. Well, it's because I'm going over blue, asphaltum has a yellow cast to it, ah, so it gives okay. you a green tone. Uh, so, do your videos stay on YouTube indefinitely? Yes, they so do. So far. Yeah. <laughs> so far. Oh, oh. Deb Antonick. Hi, Madam Deb. Madam Trouble. Madam Trouble. Yeah, her and her coffee are here. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just shading along the bottom of that teacup with a little asphaltum just to round out the cup makes it look like a bowl um, you have this one for the summer any plans for fall and winter to make a piece for a nice four seasonal piece we do have these in a four seasonal piece actually oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the original series has one called merry christmas which is chickadees and holly yeah um the spring one is it's called spring garden chickadee and it is with tulips various colors and the fall one has leaves beautiful fall leaves watercolor and i don't get along either uh, <laughs> so that saucer i'm going to shade both ends of that saucer with a little bit of asphaltum like so just a weak float is this pattern available on your website? Absolutely. There. Right there. There it is. Worldwideweb.treatthemoreau.net <laughs> So there's my teacup. Now, we're going to start doing some highlighting. Now, I'm feeling particularly lazy today, so I'm going to use a point blender to do my highlighting on this. You cheeky. So I'm loading that point blender. You can use any dry brush, whether it's a point blender, whether it's a dome blender, or a um, bringle blender, whatever you happen to have on hand, this will work just fine. So I'm just going to put a very light highlight on the leading edge of that. And I like it soft. I would rather put layers on than to put on too much and not like it. So I'm using. After the description of the effect now, I'm really anxious to see you do it. <laughs> it's fun and it's very pretty and it adds like lots of sparkle to things. And I love the dimension it creates. So there's my highlight. I come in from the edge a little bit. I don't want to take it right to the mm -hmm. edge. Uh, that is an IPC point blender. That's the type of brush he's using right now. Yeah. And these are also available from the brush guys. I know Deb Antonet carries them on her site, but I think she's sold out at the moment. Oh, is she? Yeah. Uh, I haven't purchased your dot stencil yet. I'm giving it a go with my dotting tools. AKA Ooh, cool. Crochet hook. <laughs> <laughs> So I like... I was about to say crotchet hook. Crotchet hook? Okay. <laughs> so I'm doing the same thing to all of those little um, whirls on the on the handle here. I'm just putting a little highlight of white. And I'm going to do the sop same to the top of the handle. 
there has to be a little highlight in here. I just like this dry brushed effect in here because it softens the look of the teacup. I wish I could do the dun 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 effect on the camera. <laughs> So there is our teacup. Now the highlight is subtle. I, I prefer to have it subtle. Oh, there you go. Madam Trouble just said uh, the brushes have shipped and will be here next week. Excellent. Excellent. So we only have um, Do you accept two vanilla well? Visa gift cards on your website? I think they act as I, credit cards. I think they do, yeah. So, yes. Yep. It would be through PayPal, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next step for us is to do this little bird. And I know he freaks people out, but he's really easy to do. <laughs> I'm oh, just got to find I, my burlap. There it is. This is, this is the bird I wanted. The dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I wanted to zoom in very dramatically. <laughs> he wants to zoom in. He's all about the drama today. So the color I'm using is burlap, there you go. which is this, this muddy color here. Burlap. And this is an Americana color. This is one of those colors I don't use very often. Uh, as you can tell, it still has the old labeling. So it's at least two to three years old, <laughs> at least. The he still looks like he's got a snowball on his nose. So I have a quarter inch angle and a three eighths angle are the brushes that I'm using for this little guy. And a 10 knot liner for this little bird. He's not difficult to do. I promise. It's well, going if to... If doesn't move the <laughs> surface, you'll be able to see everything. I have to move it, but... Ah. Okay. Why is he upside down? Because this is the easiest way for me to reach him. <laughs> <laughs> so I have loaded my angle, my, this is the quarter inch angled shader. I've loaded it to float with burlap and I'm going to come out to the very end of his tail feathers and I'm going to float across the edge like so, and then I'm going to pull the whole brush back like so. I'm watching. So I'm laying in a little color, and then I'm pulling the whole chisel edge of the brush right back like so. Don't be afraid to reload that brush. It's a chisel blend. <laughs> Hello from Florida slash Georgia border. Whoa. It's not warm here today. <laughs> Well, you know what? Warm is subjective. <laughs> yeah. So I'm using the chisel edge of the brush for this. So I'm pulling that color back. So I should end up with three bands of color. Just like so. Am I good? He's kind of out of the shot. You gotta bring him. There you go. Okay. Now, the tech section down here of these tail feathers, again, this brush is loaded to float, so I'm on that chisel edge, and I'm going to pull back, and I'm going to do it again. Now, I'm working in layers, so I should have three layers like so, and then I can pull that all the way back. So I'm pushing like forward. It forms like a V. I was going to say it's like a C stroke. It is a C stroke. Uh, it's just an abbreviated one. Just like that. Now these little rounded feathers at the top of the wing, when you look at the line drawing, you'll be able to see the shape of them. They're going to get a C stroke. So push forward and pull back so it forms a U. And they overlap slightly. Just like so. So it should look kind of like fish scales. And then I'm going to do that again where they overlap slightly. 
Can you hold the chisel blender brush up to the camera for a moment, please? So we can see it better. Look at that! It's a uh, black gold dynasty. Yeah, this is a dynasty black gold. It's a quarter inch angled shader. That's the brush that I'm using. So it forms what looks like fish scales. You make it look so flipping easy. <laughs> now, that fluffy little belly and his fluffy little chest are going to be done the same manner. I've loaded the brush as if to float, but the brush is going to stand straight up and down on its chisel edge. And you're going to tap and pull. So if I tap once and pull, this is what I get. And if I do it in little clusters, look what happens. I get this nice fluffy row of feathers. Sorry for the chickadee. And again, I'm going to slightly overlap. Overlap and in between. So that lighter value, or in this case, that darker value, Pretty much recreating a texture. Yep. So it's just, I'm making him fluffy, that's all. And if you work back from here to under his chin, it's much easier. It's a very directional approach. Yep. To getting that texture. I pick up a little bit more. And like I said, it's just a tap and pull. I keep the brush right on the <laughs> chisel edge. So straight up and down. You guys got to send us pictures of the work that you do. We got to see. If you paint this chickadee, we want to see it. Yep. So now I'm going to highlight this little guy, and I'm picking up on that dirty brush a little bit of that warm white. And I'm going to little... come down here. Am I still in the shot? Yeah. There you go. Yep. So I'm going to come down here, and I want the bulk of this white towards his belly like this. So I'm just going back over where I was before, but I'm not going all the way. Yeah. So I want to keep that brightness towards his belly. Just like that. And where I overlap the teacup, you can see he gets nice and fluffy. And I'm going to do the same thing to all of these feathers. I'm going to highlight his tail feathers with a little stroke like so. Uh, that's off camera. Am I? There you go. So again, standing it up on the chisel edge and I want to put a highlight on his little feathers. And I'm going to do a little bit on each of those curved feathers. So I'm just putting a little stroke. <laughs> and again, to each of these little guys, those little feathers here all get a little highlight. I'm running out of water in my brush. There we go. You're lucky to have a talented techie for a son. Oh, see? Here techie. That's a good techie. word. Comments like that make my head grow. Yeah, we'll have to butter his ears. Mm -hmm. So there is the highlight on those little feathers. And if you feel he's a little too... I'm going to have to catch a chickadee in my yard. <laughs> Don't be afraid to fluff him up by putting a few more layers in. If you find he's looking a little bland, like I thought he was looking a little sketchy there, so... It's about time for a chickadee impression again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got his wings done, we've got his tail done. Now we're going to have to give him... His crown. His little cheek. So I'm going to 
It should be good right there. Yeah, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to use my angle, and this is just straight warm white for this part. I'm going to start right by the corner of his beak, and we're going to put a chisel blend of that warm white. And we're going to come all the way back. I'm thinking rooks. They have the little red crown, don't they? Yeah, yeah. it's a rook. That's a rook. Those are annoying. We don't have those here. I know, but have you ever heard them? Mm -hmm. They're like blue jays. Yeah, they Except screech. angry. <laughs> angry blue jays. <laughs> so I'm using just straight warm white, and I'm putting in that chisel blend. A techie with humor. He yeah, adds most to of the them. Video. <laughs> what do you get there? So just a little warm white, and this gives him that nice bright cheek cheeky little devil. And before I rinse out my brush, I'm going to put a little, oops, too strong. <laughs> Chuck will have to learn camera skills for post-COVID. So I'm going to put a little float of warm white, just a weak float towards the front of his head. And now I'm going to take, I need some lamp black for this, just to clean up his. I have to get rid of the snowball. <laughs> <laughs> the snowball on his nose? The snowball on his nose. So I'm going to take my liner brush. I need to clean him up a little so that I get his beak back because his beak seems to have gone missing. There we go. Now I'm taking a little bit of asphaltum. And that black, you don't really need to. I'm just cleaning it up like so, just to give him a beak. And then I'm going to take my warm white and I'm going to go around that eye with a little line of white. And I may have to fix that bit, but that's okay. And then I want to take that same little bit of white and just put a fine feathery line along the top of his head. And I'm going to do the same thing on the front here just to brighten up some of these highlights. Amy says, I love the vocals of the live. They are fun and even very, even informational. Uh, and a fine little dot for the highlight on his eye. And now we're going to do the shading on this little guy. And this is going to go fast. The music on the playback is too loud and makes it hard to hear Tracy. Oh, okay. Um, there is something we're going to be doing for the playbacks on YouTube. There's, uh, there's not going to be music throughout. It's just going to be a little, kind of like an intro tune. Yep. Rather than having music play throughout the entire thing. So now we have to shade and accentuate all these layers that we just spent so much time putting in. Now I've loaded my angle with what else? A schwaltum. And I'm going to put a float underneath each of these layers of feathers. And it's just a weak float. It pops though. But it rounds out this guy really nicely. To zoom out because you're on camera. So I'm putting a float there under each of these layers. Remember, these are all layered. So that little float goes underneath, like so. And underneath these little layers here, although they don't seem like it, <laughs> that little shadow will make a world of difference. Right there. What liner brush do you use? I My favorite liner is a 10-aught or a 15-aught extra-long detail liner, and it's in the Micron. That's this one right here. That's my favorite liner brush. Yay. So there you are. You can take your liner brush, and um, I'm going to use a little bit of this, but just to outline his beak a little bit, to put a little highlight on it. That's all. 
it doesn't have to be much just to show it up and there is our little chickadee yeah, that's, it. that's it now in the line drawing he's got legs i just ended up painting right over them <laughs> because i think he's actually cuter without them <laughs> But there amputee is our chickadee. there is our little chickadee. <laughs> chickadee amputee. <laughs> so we only thing we have left to do aside from the cloisonne, which we're going to do right at the end, um, is the lettering up here, and that is done with Bahama blue. Of course, because it's going to match the teacup and uh, peacock oh, teal. A word for that. Matt. Opposition. <laughs> That's the word, <laughs> I think. Balance, harmony. Balance, balance, harmony. So I'm using, in this case, I'm using a zero rigger. You could use a number two just as well. And I'm going to... It's my favorite part. I love doing the lettering. So I need that paint fairly milky. And for those of you who haven't watched before, this is what a rigger is. A rigger looks like, an, like a long liner, but it actually has a chisel edge like a flat brush. It doesn't come to a point. I'm zooming in. Got it. So it doesn't have a point. There you go. Oh, good. So it, it will come up square. Yeah. And two. There we go. So that when you tap that brush on your palette, it squares up. So then you can have that chisel edge right on the edge of the letter, press down to open up the brush, and then come back up onto the chisel edge. Ta-da! Angry faces? How did you get angry faces? Chisel edge, open up the brush, come up onto the chisel edge. Dynasty. Of course they're <laughs> dynasty. <laughs> this is a dynasty faux squirrel rigger. How'd they, how'd they do that? Do what? How'd they get the happy face emoji upside down? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm the techie and I don't know how to do that. The angry face is upside down. No, but the happy face emoji. Okay. Like completely upside down. Oh, I, I have no idea. I, my dad, I don't use Facebook. The only time I use Facebook is with her. So, right. where can I get a rigger? Well, not at our website. The brush guys. <laughs> you go to the brush guys. So that's the only trick to working with. Tap that brush flat so that you get that squared off edge. Come up to the top of the letter, stand it on the chisel edge, pull it along, press down until it fills the space, and then come back up onto the chisel edge. And I just royally messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> It happens. Let me show you how it works. Well, not like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so chisel edge, press down till the brush opens up and fills the space, and then come all the way down. Let's try that again, shall we? The emoji comes upside down. Okay. Oh, it was in the comments? Yeah, it was in okay. the comments. Okay, I thought you were talking about the emojis in the... Oh, uh, like the like, laugh, and... Uh, oh, okay. Those. Yeah, there must be one in there. Yeah. Uh, where did you get your rigger brush? <laughs> Straight from Dynasty. Yeah. What size is it? This one is a number zero. Ah, zero. Yeah. Um, I'm partial to the oh. zero and the number two. Those are my two favorite sizes. See, that's what you want to hear. Use the rigger for the first time at Christmas. My lettering has never been that good. So your lettering has improved, I take it. That's what I'm getting from it. <laughs> I came in at the end, it appears. I will have to watch the entire lesson later. I need an on-off button for the kids and husband. <laughs> Don't we all? 
<laughs> and thank you. I truly believe your video. Believe your videos. The world is out of rigors. <laughs> Emoji comes upside down. I need to loosen up. I realize I was holding my breath when <laughs> the <laughs> chickadee. <laughs> Uh, try Dick Blick. Dick Blick may have them, yes. Yeah. Dick Blick does carry the faux squirrels, so they may have the riggers. Practice, 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 practice. Yeah. Yes. And that is key. You have to practice doing this. It's <laughs> brush control. It's probably wine time. When is it not time for wine? <laughs> when it's vodka time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, didn't I say that the other day? Yeah. yeah. A day without wine is vodka day. <laughs> <laughs> a day without wine is vodka day. Uh, Veronica agreed with me. Uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not surprised by that. Yep. Uh, the upside down one is of the choices. Be silly, like monkey bar hanging silly. Oh, okay, oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> Using these brushes makes lettering fun and easy. Yes, it does. I, and I think part of it is that quite simply the brush is responsive. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. I, I you know what? It does do nice lettering. It does do very nice lettering. Grab your rigor brush, print off a couple of um, words, scripts, and whatnot on just onto paper and practice over printing, you know, or paint the alphabet. Yeah. But just practice painting over the lettering. You'll find that it helps dramatically. So that's about it as far as the lettering is concerned. It's just, again, tap the brush till you get a flat edge, press down till it fills the space. And then come back up onto the chisel edge. I'm going to need that for the gold border. Yep. Uh, no, I need the longer one for the border. How many of those six inch rotors do you have? Enough. <laughs> There's another one over here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just about done with this lettering. I'll probably clean it up afterwards. Um, I usually do because I'm never completely satisfied with it. So until I get it all tidied up. But once you have your lettering in place, I'm going to switch this out for a second because I want to show you on this one. You're going to shade your lettering at the base, which means down here at the bottom of the letters. And you're going to do that with your 3 8 angle. Oh, I thought you were going to do the full closing angle. Next. Yeah. Going on an hour and 40 minutes. That's okay, because the closing angle is not going to take that long. No, oh, okay. So we're going to shade the bottom of the letter with just a float, a nice small float of that peacock teal. And it's just at the base of the letter. It gives it a nice little shadow. And I don't know, it just gives the lettering a little bit of shape and dimension. And just makes the lettering a little more interesting. This so it's not just a flat color. Showing your talents and instructions helps you fall in love with, your, with the acrylics. Yeah. Um, what font do you use for this and other projects um that varies i've probably i don't know 50 or 60 thousand different fonts um <laughs> <laughs> but so it varies but this one in particular if i'm not mistaken and i'm probably mistaken but i think it's called melanie melanie yeah oh uh, we don't we don't keep track of time on paint with tracy you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So we put a little shading at the bottom of each letter and it just, it rounds out this lettering nicely. It keeps them tied, you know, nice balance and becomes harmonious with that teacup. Pulls the eye around so that those colors all move together. So 
Now we're going to do that faux cloisonné. I love this stuff. This is just too, too much fun. So now we come back to that. Uh, remember somebody had asked about that space in between. So I'm using a product uh, made by Pebio. It's called Mix Mixion Relief or Relief Mixion. It's an adhesive. It's a gold leaf adhesive. And it comes in this little tube and you can squeeze it out and you're going to trace all over those lines. Every segment all the way around those flowers. Oh, you do this on Saturdays? Yes, every Saturday that's new project, new class, new, new everything. Yep, try to do something new, something interesting every week. New technique, whether it's and I use, focused on a new technique or... Yeah, just try to keep everybody engaged and give them something new to play with, some new toys for their sandbox. <laughs> Renee, you would probably have a huge revolt if you said you had to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just tracing around each of the elements of these daffodils with that relief. This is available on Amazon. If you're looking for it, you can find it on Amazon. Ooh, that's got some dank to it. Yeah, this one is kind of stinky. It's not too, too bad though. Um, there are There is another product uh, called Cern Relief, which is uh, a gold paint that is dimensional, that is also made by Pevio. You can use that as well, but I'm kind of partial to this one because I like the the bling that it gives. So you're just going to trace around all of the elements on these daffodils. And it, this stuff will also hide a multitude of sins. So if you have any little wobbly bits that you're not particularly fond of, you can cover, you them. Know, cover them up a little bit. Now this stuff dries crystal clear, but it dry sticky so it will be tacky uh, what is the name of it and how do you spell it it's pebeo jadeo of course i get one that's got a crack in it um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um it's relief mixion and so it would can you zoom in on that name sure. it's made by pebeo and you're looking for relief mixion M-I-X-T-I-O-N. And this is an adhesive, a dimensional adhesive. Okay. That looks, it's got Cyrillic on it, so it's probably from the Ukraine. Or... It's from France, actually, and it's sold all over the world. Ah. How'd you get one with Cyrillic on it? Because they... Were you in England when you were... No. You I get this one from Dessert. If you're in Canada, you can get this from Omer Dessert. Ah, there you go. And if you're in the U.S., you can get it off of Amazon. So I'm putting, if you notice, on those petals, on that highlight part, I'm putting a little stroke of that adhesive. It's a glue. It is a glue, yes. And I'm going to, from the center of these flowers, I'm going to put... Yeah, I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Yep, I'm going to put a few little... Things like this and a couple little dots. So all of those lines that you see on your flower, you're going to put that adhesive. What was the name of the distributor in Canada? Omer Dessert. Omer Dessert? Yep. Dessert Craft Stores. They're couple in Edmonton, and there's some in Montreal, and I think there's some in Toronto, and I, I know Dick there's... Dick Blick carries it too. Yeah, Dick Blick may have it. How long does it take to dry to the sticky feel? It actually doesn't take very long, about 20 minutes, um, and you can speed that up with a hair dryer. Which is what we're going to do, because I... I don't think we have 20 minutes left no. on this battery pack. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can see that that outline, 
and I like having that little bit on the center. Every once in a while you have to wipe the tip so that you can, you know, get that fine line because it does get you know, filled up after a while. But it is fairly easy. It's You don't have to squeeze really hard on this. So there I have it. Now if you're feeling particularly adventurous, you could do it to the leaves too, but I kind of like it just on the flowers. But that's me, I am just I like it that way. So I'm going to locate my cap and close that up. I'm gonna quickly dry this. It doesn't take too, too long to dry it. It dry, starts to close up really fast. You don't want a lot of heat on it though. or it will start to bubble if it gets too hot. I do like this. I love the the effect is very 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 cool. not drying very quick but so I'm going to move this out of the way for the time being and we'll come over here to this one so that I can walk you through the next step so once that sarin relief or that um, that relief is dry you're going to use this uh, this is deco foil you can get this off of Amazon as well um, I have the links if you go to my Facebook page Tracy Moreau uh, Facebook page I do have the links to both these, the adhesive and the foil. Oh my gosh, there we go. <laughs> so you can cut this into more manageable sizes. A, a package of this comes several sheets. You put it right on top of it. Oh. Yep. So it comes several sheets in a tube and, and you can get a variety of different colors in this too. And there's, there's five full size sheets in this. There are six by 12 inches, that's tons, believe me because you can do two pieces on a tiny piece like this. So what you're going to do is once that adhesive is completely dry, it's very sticky. And so you lay the, no. you lay the foil onto the adhesive with the silver side or the white side down. And then you're going to burnish it like so. You can use um, you know, a small plastic tool or your fingernails, you don't want to push too hard. And then it will stick to the adhesive and then you can pull it back and that gold will remain on the adhesive and it'll give you a nice gold look. I have a few places here where I don't have enough gold. So that gives you that metallic border all the way around the floral. And then give that a couple of seconds just to sit for a bit. That stuff stinks. <laughs> and then once it's been there for a couple of minutes and you run your hands over it, I still see a couple of spots here where I didn't get any foil. So I'm going to burnish and peel away. So even if you miss a spot, you can come back in and just burnish a little bit and it will pick up the color. Once you put your hand on it and you don't feel any more sticky spots, then you know that you've got foil everywhere. <laughs> Asking a crazy question, but do you speak French as well? Um, badly. Badly. <laughs> Bad French. <laughs> yes, I, I understand it quite well, but I don't speak it very well. So here is what I'm using. This is uh, Decorts DuraClear Gloss Varnish. Now, you could use any varnish, but I like the gloss because of the contrast. So I get that high sheen on this matte background. So that's why I'm using it. So I poured a little of it into a squeeze bottle with um, a little tip. And then I'm going to flood 
inside that gold foil with that varnish like so now having that tip makes this easy to control that's the only reason you could put it on with a brush but honestly it takes a long time to get up build up the layers and you kind of want to flood this so that you get a really deep look Ooh, could you use gold leaf with this adhesive yes you can quite easily the only reason that i use the foil is is simply the price point gold leaf is uh, quite pricey even the metallic flakes the metallic sheets um, like the mona lisa version they can be quite pricey as well that's what i used on that motorcycle helmet mm -hmm. that um, was not cheap yeah but the um, the deco foil is affordable and you can use it over and over and over again until the sheet is empty so you're not really wasting anything it's much easier to control uh... so i'm flooding each segment of this flower with that gloss varnish like so so it's going to look a little milky for a bit do this after varnishing um if you're going to use a matte varnish, then yes, do this after the varnishing, because effectively you're varnishing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is it turning pink? Right now, it's it's not pink. It's just, it's milky in tone, so it's looking pink. Okay. It's not going to dry like that. It's not going to dry like that. It's going to dry glossy like these other ones here. It just looked pink on camera. Yeah. It's just milky because it's wet, yeah. but it will dry crystal clear. Very nice effect. Awesome. It adds a lot of dimension and you can layer this. So if you've got one layer of that, that varnish on and you really want it a little slicker looking or a little thicker looking, you can put more on. Would the gold kern relief do the same? Yes, it will. The CERN relief? CERN. Yeah. yeah. Kern. The CERN will. relief will do the same thing. So if you can't find the adhesive and the foil, then by all means use the CERN relief. So there is your faux cloisonné effect. And essentially that mimics enamel work. So it's an easy effect to do. How do you keep the varnish from running? Uh, because the varnish isn't running because this little gold wall that you've put up. <laughs> so it keeps the varnish in place until it completely dries. This is a really easy and really fun effect. Um, and because of this, you don't have to be too worried about all the minutia or the tiny little details because they're gonna be buried under all these different layers. So it's a, a, this is a really fun technique and it works really, really well on a variety of things. Just not very well on vertical surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. Yeah. Awesome finish to the edges. Love the effect. A wonderful lesson. Can't wait to paint this. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Bunch of thank yous. And yes, I'm sorry. I'm reading comments. He's reading comments and I'm waving at him to let him. It's time to flip the camera up. Okay, guys. I do have a giveaway today. I have two stencil sets uh, and a brush set for each of those stencil sets. So you've got two brushes and two stencils coming in that. Um, have you picked a couple of names today, I, or have you been too busy? I've been not really busy, <laughs> just a lot of questions today. He's had a lot of questions today. That's good. We enjoy the questions. Um, so we will randomly select anyone if you want to be in, um, there we go. Oh, in the running for that. He's just going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Reynolds. Janet Reynolds is one winner. And let's go... It's like Russian roulette. Yep. That one. <laughs> I don't know how to say that name. <laughs> <laughs> Take a stab at it. Take a stab at it? <laughs> I, I don't know. There's a lot of... Let me not see. a lot of vowels in it. Put it oh. that way. <laughs> <laughs> so Janet Reynolds and... I'm going to say Lori. Lori. 
Windemeyer? Windemeyer. Windemeyer? Lori Windemeyer. I, I think that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The first okay. one had nothing but vowels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Already. Windenmeyer? Windemeyer. Windemeyer? Or are you Windemeyer? Okay. <laughs> okay. So Janet Reynolds and Lori Windemeyer, you're the winners of the stencil sets and the brush set. We've got some Dynasty Black Gold Fan and a Dynasty Fountain Brush for you this week. Hopefully you're watching and you can just mess message us. Yep. And just, battery just... Send yeah, us... Okay, so send us a message on Messenger with your shipping information and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can, uh, which will be this week coming. Uh, also, remember, we'll be sending out a notification letting you know that, uh, what time and where we will be on YouTube next Saturday for our live on YouTube. I'm excited about that one. Never done that, so that one's a, a new experience for us. Yep. Yep. There's going to be... Uh... A live chat. Yeah, there so, will be a live chat in there, which is kind of cool. So be uh, it'll be a different medium for us. So I'm kind of excited about that one. Um, in order to get notifications for that, go to my YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. And the so, bell notification. And the bell notification so that you get a notification <laughs> when, we go live. when we go live. So having said all that, everybody, um, they, I know things are difficult for our friends south of the border these days. Uh, so try to stay positive and upbeat. Know that all of us north of the border are sending high fives and stay safe. And uh, to my friends in Ontario, please, please, please wear your mask. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. And uh, hopefully we all come out of this mess in good shape. So uh, until next week, mwah, love you. Stay safe. <laughs>